iOS 16 is here, and it literally comes with hundreds of changes, with the biggest ones being the new lock screen and uh, the enhanced notification center. But I actually managed to find 28 changes that are super cool that Apple did not mention at the event. So here's all of those changes. 28 supported devices. Apple actually dropped support for the iPhone SE 1, the iPhone 6S, and the iPhone 7, and the iPod Touch 7 Gen. So this is one of the fewest times when two generations of iOS devices have been dropped. So yeah, it's quite unusual. 27, this is what, probably my favorite one. So if you go to settings and then you go to sound and then you go to keyboard feedback, you can select haptic feedback because yes, now we have haptic feedback in the default keyboard on iOS. Like I've been using Google's Gboard for years on my iPhone just because of the haptic feedback support. But uh, guess what? Now the default one has it too. And it's actually identical. You're probably wondering if there's any differences. The only one that I found was that uh, when you delete characters, you can feel some haptic feedback too. But that's pretty much it. It feels great. Everyone should be using it. So get iOS 16 for the haptic keyboard. 26, this is also a very good one. So if you go to settings and then you select your Wi-Fi network, now you can, guess what? See your password. Uh, normally you could share your password before when uh, a friend had an iPhone nearby, but now if there's an Android device or you just want to, you know, send it as a text to someone, you actually can. 25, this is an awesome one. So remember when uh, in our What to Expect video, I was saying that one of my most requested features was having a dedicated AirPods app. Well, we, we basically do. So as long as you have your AirPods enabled and then you go to settings, you will see this extra AirPods settings at the top and this will open up a dedicated AirPods page from which you can configure them. Uh, you can change the microphone, you can you know, see them in Find My. So there's a lot of settings, including the battery life. Um, and before this was just very difficult to access. So we kind of have a dedicated AirPods app now. 24, Apple also included a wallpaper generator. It is quite unintuitive to access. So you need to have your iPhone unlocked, then hold on the lock screen, then click the plus, and then you can create a new lock screen essentially. So if you go to, let's say emoji, you can actually type whatever emojis you want and it's gonna use these as a wallpaper. So I guess that's pretty cool. You have a couple of different options here or I can select the color one. And in this case, I actually get to pick between different gradients and I can change their color and uh, the opacity to really make my own unique wallpaper. So it's, it's pretty cool. 23, Face ID actually works in landscape now. So if I rotate my iPhone and then I'm trying to unlock it, as you can tell, it unlocked. I did have a couple of issues in the past where my iPhone was just resting on a table uh, and I was trying to unlock it and it just didn't unlock because it wasn't really, you know, facing me. Well, that's not an issue anymore. 22, we now have live captions, meaning that uh, people with hearing disabilities can see in real time subtitles to not just video and audio that is played back on the device, but also people in the room talking to you. This is so cool. 21, door detection. Yes, your iPhone can actually detect doors, uh, not just visually, but also tell when they're closed or open and how to open them. So uh, if you have someone in the family with uh, visual disabilities, then uh, this is could be quite helpful. Then 20, you can actually control your Apple Watch using the iPhone. <laughs> so you can get a mirrored screen of your Apple Watch in real time uh, if you're having some trouble controlling your watch. And yes, you get full control from your iPhone. I am quite surprised that uh, we can have a video feed transmitted in real time from your Apple Watch, but yeah, it works and it's it's pretty cool. And 19, the weather app also got some updates. If you take a look at it, it looks pretty much identical to iOS 15, but now you can actually tap on these individual cards to get more details. I can get more detail in terms of the uh, overall temperature, the uh, precipitation, and basically everything. I can tap on pretty much anything in the app to get more details. And uh, number 18, the weather app can now display severe weather warnings and alerts directly in the app. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see more quick tips and tricks on iOS 16, definitely subscribe to our brand new Zone of Tech Shorts channel. 17, iOS 16 now has full support for the Nintendo Switch controllers. So that includes both the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller. We previously had the PS5 controller support and support for the Xbox controller, which means that now, no matter what controller you have, it will actually work with your iPhone. 16, this is probably the most creative one. So it's called combined controllers. And essentially, if you have, let's say a favorite game, but that game is actually single player only, and you wanna play it with a friend of yours, you can actually pair two controllers to your iPhone. And then one person controls, uh, let's say the joysticks, 
and the other one controls the button, so you can play a single parallel game uh, using two controllers that actually act as one. Really cool stuff. Another super creative one is 15 personalized spatial audio. So essentially, you can now use your um, LiDAR camera on your iPhone to scan the shape of your ear and then uh, use that to get like a 3D view of your ear, which your AirPods would then use to optimize their audio uh, performance. This is pretty insane. Then 14, there is a search button at the bottom of your <laughs> iOS 16 home screen, uh, which now replaces those dots. So if you want to get those dots back, you just have to swipe left or right, and you can tap on that to go into search. You can still drag down to activate search, but this is just a, I don't know, a different way to access search. By the way, you can disable this from the settings if you wish. 13, this is probably the most unexpected one. You can actually create a custom email domain using iCloud. And I'm not talking about those, you know, private, you know, those hidden uh, email addresses. I'm talking about an actual domain. So if you go to iCloud, you have the custom email domain option. So I can tap on that. And then I can literally buy a domain. So if I search for uh, Zone of Tech KP, which is the North Korean domain. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available. It's probably taken, but there you go. I can buy the IO, Zone of Tech IO for <laughs> $33 a year. Then 12, this is also a pretty interesting one. Uh, in the Books app, you now have multiple themes. So if you press on this button here, I can now select between six different themes. And the thing is, I can actually customize these. So if I go into Options, I can change the font, I can change the background and that sort of stuff and then I can have whatever six combinations uh, that I want. But number 11, unfortunately, they got rid of that really cool page flipping animation that I used to have up until I was 15. So this is the one that I used to have, and it's really one of the only remaining uh, skeuomorphism animations uh, in iOS. And this is, uh, this is the new one. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's definitely more modern, but I mean, going from this to just this, I think it's a major downgrade. Number 10, you can now create reminder templates. Long story short, you can basically have a couple of shopping lists and then save all of those as uh, a reminder template. And then you can basically switch between these different templates and restore them, erase them, that sort of stuff. So pretty cool, especially when you plan on reusing reminder lists. Number nine, we now have automatic smart folders in the Notes app. So if I press on this button here, I can basically create a smart folder uh, which is going to automatically add all the nodes that follow these um, this, these filters into the folder. So, I don't know, I can have specific tags, specific dates, even specific words and mentions and attachments. So, this is super useful, especially for people who do use nodes on a consistent basis. Eight, you can now convert currency using the camera. So, just like you can automatically translate uh, using the camera, anything that you see on, on the street, on street signs or any text, you can do the same with currency. Number seven, we have a pretty big update to two-factor authentications. So in iOS 15, Apple added the option to use iCloud Keychain for two-factor codes. Well, now you can actually use uh, third-party apps in iCloud Keychain. So there you go. I have uh, Google Authenticator installed, so I can just pick that. And iCloud Keychain is going to use all the codes from Google Authenticator. Number six, you can now undo and redo your photo edits. So if you don't like how an edits, uh, came out um, even after a while you can actually go into edit and press redo and undo sadly it doesn't work at the moment because it's glitched but I can revert to the original photo we also get a pretty big update to how portrait mode photos work so now you can actually edit the focus afterwards and I'm not talking about a blur you can obviously adjust that but you can also change the subject so I can tap on the plant to focus on the plant or I can tap on uh, the book uh, to focus on that. Cinematic video has been updated, so it's much more accurate in terms of the cuts. Like, look at how sharp my hand looks in this one uh, compared to some of the older recordings. It's like a night and day upgrade. Then number three in photos, you now have duplicate deletion, which is automatic. So if you have a lot of the same photo from your friends, you can now delete all the duplicates. Then number two, we have a new way for Apple to give us updates, uh, specifically security updates. So right now, let's say if a new malware appears for all the iPhones, Apple needs to release a massive software update, iOS 16.01 or 16.5 or something like that. Well, now with rapid response, they can just push a security update that only affects that malware. So it fixes the uh, vulnerability to, um, well, stop the malware from spreading. And number one, we have easy Siri shortcuts. So what this means is that if you just bought yourself a new robot vacuum, for example, uh, which integrates with Siri shortcuts, normally you would have to 
add that shortcut to the shortcut app. Well, now it all works automatically. So you can just tell Siri to activate your robot vacuum and it would automatically start without any configuration needed. But yeah, these were all the changes that I thought were quite interesting that Apple did not mention at all at the event. And uh, if you want to see a video with the more general changes and my overall thoughts on iOS 16 and iPadOS, then definitely leave a like to this video. We also have a video on the uh, MacBook Air compared to uh, the M2 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air, the previous gen that Apple is still selling. So yeah, definitely subscribe for those. Uh, I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.